So we've been really busy for the last week preparing and testing a whole bunch of different instruments that are going to be installed inside of this borehole. These instruments are going to be inserted into the same borehole that the Genius Plug came out of about a week ago. So I'm going to take you guys and give you a bit of a rundown on all of the different things that we're going to be putting in this hole. So this impressive instrument is called a strain meter. And the strain meter is going to measure either the expansion or the contraction of the Earth's crust inside the borehole. At the Nankai Trough, during the time period between earthquakes, we expect a contraction to occur as pressure builds up on the plate boundary, preparing for the next big earthquake. So this instrument is a broadband seismometer, and it's detecting seismic waves due to earthquakes in the region, and it's going to enable really accurate detection and location of earthquakes in the area of the Nankai Trough. Now there's two really big advantages to putting this instrument inside of a borehole. Number one, putting it into the borehole deep beneath the Earth's surface is going to put it that much closer to the big plate boundary fault where the big earthquakes start and nucleate. And number two, the borehole environment is much quieter and it's going to produce much higher quality seismological data and enable detection of smaller earthquakes than we would otherwise be able to do. So this is a tilt meter. And this tilt meter will measure the upward or downward tilt of the Earth's crust surrounding the borehole. And this instrument will also help us to diagnose the behavior of the plate boundary fault between and leading up to the big earthquakes. So this instrument is going to record temperature within the fault zone and allow us to determine if there are any changes in temperature with time. For example, if fluids start flowing through the fault zone, you might expect changes in temperature that we can record here with this instrument. One of the seismometers is called an accelerometer, which is specifically made to be able to look at the really big earthquakes, which most of the seismometers can't do. And then the second type of seismometer in here is a geophone. And geophones are extremely sensitive and are particularly well suited to look at very, very small earthquakes and also to do imaging of the surrounding crust and the plate boundary fault. So these instruments here are pressure sensors, and they're going to allow us to detect any small changes in pressure, both at the seafloor on the wellhead and also down deep within the borehole, including within the mega splay fault zone. These pressure sensors are sort of like strain meters in that they're going to detect the expansion or the contraction of the Earth's crust surrounding the borehole. So this long yellow piece of hardware is basically the top of the observatory. It's going to be sticking right up out of the seafloor. The pressure sensors are mounted on this big observatory head and also the connectors for the other instruments inside of the borehole. These yellow grates sitting over here are going to be mounted on the observatory head and they're going to form a little platform for the ROV to land on and actually connect to the observatory equipment and download data and communicate with the instruments. You can also put batteries and other types of equipment that are needed for the observatories on these platforms as well. So the intense pressures and the really extreme conditions that these observatories are going to be subjected to are pretty incredible. The scientists and engineers that have been involved in this project for many years have worked very hard to design and develop instruments and hardware that can withstand these deep sea conditions and hopefully provide us with some amazing data sets for many years to come. So finally, a few months after this observatory gets installed, it's going to be linked up to a cable on shore, and that cable is going to transmit the data from these observatories in real time to scientists on land, and that's going to allow us to look for any changes in what's happening on the plate boundary from the comfort of our own offices.